Asiem Nasieya, Anta Cecilia Point, Talitinatla, Homasquiam, Amita Kopilam, Natsamata Squalowin. We're all of one heart and one mind today. And uh, I really, Hechka, many thank yous to Ruth for doing things in the right way. I remember when uh, a, a group came out from Elsie Puktuk and uh, shared with us what was happening on their front lines. And um, some very interesting conversations took place that day. Uh, the young lady uh, said, um, you know, it really helps them to go out and, and get out on the land. Uh, just like you were saying this morning, you need to go back to the land and uh, unplug. But not only that, the, the reason you're going out there is so that you can listen. The ancestors are speaking through those old growth trees and, and coming in on waves off the water. And I keep saying the same thing over and over again about the wildlife that keeps coming into the city, the huge whales, and the, even the bears and the deer that was in Stanley Park, they're coming back with messages for us. Um, you know, don't forget us. And I think they're, they're bringing messages from our ancestors. So, someone else in our group that day, and it was sort of a, a day of uh, strategy sessions as well, because you know, as you know, with the last government, things were a little more <laughs> tenuous. So we were all coming up with ideas. Some I can't share in this room. <laughs> but uh, another woman there said, you know, she was from this territory, and she said, we, we can't go back on the land. We're, there's concrete all around us. So it's very difficult. And even um, um, there's a beautiful... Uh, three-segment exhibit about Musqueam at um, the Museum of Anthropology, the Museum of Vancouver, and at our own cultural center. And in the films, you'll hear our elders and, and even some of the younger people uh, talking about our history. And, you know, where we live now, uh, where our reserve is, um, sort of near UBC, uh, we would go out into the forest to strip cedar. And now we're not allowed to do that. There's certain times of year when we're allowed and, and uh, you know, it has to be approved. Like, it's this whole bureaucratic mess with the, with the crown to, to go out and just strip cedar for, you know, what, what we need for everyday living. <laughs> so, it, so just to give you an idea of um, just the general encroachment um, from contact, and, uh, and not even contact, I would have to say that even pre-proclamation, on the West Coast, things were a lot different than they were on the East Coast, and, you know, there was lots of trading and, and so on. Um, the relationship started off a lot better out here, and, and even um, if you ever have an opportunity to read, you know, Captain Vancouver's um, journals about how uh, we greeted, our ancestors greeted his uh, ships at Stanley Park at the village of Huai Huai, and uh, it's really the colonization that, that starts to ruin things. And I'll just give one more quick example. Um, I also took some First Nation studies, and I was studying uh, about uh, the James Bay Cree and, and what happened with them and that huge dam and the thousands of caribou that were drowned, you know, which they used to sustain themselves for a variety of things. But the Crown brought in legislation that you couldn't hunt in the winter. <laughs> and like, it just made no sense because the Cree used to hunt in the winter up there because the moose would get stuck in the snow and you could just, <laughs> you could just catch them. So <laughs> but when they would catch them hunting in the winter, they would not only you know, find them, sometimes jail them, um, but they would destroy the, um, the food. They wouldn't even distribute it to anyone. They would just take it and destroy it. So... That's just a tiny, you know, p 
piece of how this whole ball got rolling. And, and I remember our stand at Cisnam. And we did stand there for 200 days. And I remember my sister and I, after we were there for a few days, um, you know, we'd have to, like, take turns to leave to go to the bathroom and go get something to eat. And then, and then all of our family came in from the land. They went out hunting. They went out on the water. They brought us fresh crab and fish. And someone built a fire. And, and there was, you know, wild game caught and cooked. And I, I just went, wow, you know, we could really make it if some huge thing happened to the lower mainland we still know how to sustain ourselves it's passed down from generations so when resource development is out there as i'm sure caleb shared last night poisoning our food poisoning the water how are how are we going to live like you know the argument is always you know well it's for the economy you know we need these jobs for the economy well what about our economy like that's how we're still living and uh, we want people to sort of come around more to our way of thinking. So I, I, I understand my, my little sister Skakala, my little sister Audrey, sang the Women's Warrior song last night. And I really want to honor the warriors who are standing on the front line because I know it's, it's hard. I mean, when I was out there, I missed months and months of time with my kids. I did go home at night, but I missed their summer vacation. I lost my job. You know, I just stood there. And, um, but we knew we had to stand there. And it's interesting when you have a calling because my ancestors were telling me to stand there. And I had actually never, ever done any public speaking before that because I'm a bookkeeper I sit behind a desk and I have a little ledger and I, please don't talk to me like that's and um, but just before we took that stand members of my community and the elders came to me and they blanketed me and said we need you to be the speaker throughout this action and you can't say no <laughs> and I remember the next morning standing there because we were about to take the Arthur Lang bridge to let our voices be heard and all the TV cameras were in my face. And I just started speaking. And in that moment, I, I felt them. You know, my ancestors came right through me and put the words out there and said what needed to be said. So I want to offer prayers to those standing on the front lines that their ancestors will stand with them and give them all the strength because that's how we function seven generations back stand with us and we work for the seven generations ahead of us so I'm gonna ask my friend to come up and join me in the Coast Salish Anthem and if you know it please stand and sing